2019 GMC Savannah with a rat chewing through the under hood causing an electrical short that kept blowing a 10 amp fuse periodically that would blow out the left side signal for the front and rear blinker. This vehicle was towed to my shop from Marco Island. From the whole thing, I'm really impressed with this outside automatic stepper that comes with the, OLED, with the LEDs that is made by AMP Research. Looking at this vehicle, it is a 2019, but you really can't tell. It hasn't changed at all. And on top of it, this is a custom vehicle. So it's not really made by GM. GM made this vehicle as a passenger vehicle, but somebody cut the roof and extended it, replaced the whole interior, carpeting and everything else. Very little is left from the original vehicle. They added a ton of modules, electronics and wiring. And the air conditioning is actually still vacuum controlled. I cannot believe that in 2019, GM is still using a vacuum actuator air conditioning system which I guess worked pretty good back in the day. So the bottom line is that when you turn on the left blinker, it clicks really fast and it doesn't work on the front and the back. The right one works fine. There's a 10 amp fuse that keeps blowing on this vehicle. So I plugged in my scan tool and did a quick scan and I realized that this vehicle already has been to many different service departments in its short life for the exact same thing and it shows that they replaced the fuse. Obviously nobody took the time to find out the short. I don't blame them. This vehicle is very tight. Tight meaning there is no space for anything. So much has been packed into this tiny under hood compartment that you really can't reach anything. I don't really see any where there's a rat infested. I don't see any droppings. I don't see anything chewed up. The body shop did replace <clears throat> the overflow coolant bottle and they did patch up a tiny hole in the air conditioning box right there in the corner underneath this washer bottle. But I don't see any other signs of a rat really moving in and building a nest and chewing through the wires. I, I do see some kind of wasp nest which tells me that this vehicle has been sitting for a very long time. But nevertheless, there's a, fuse, there's a fuse box underneath this hood that has the fuses for all the body control functions on this vehicle. It's almost impossible to get to this fuse box and there's additional modules that were added to this vehicle for all the accessories that it has. So I'm gonna go in there and check the fuse. I already know, according to the service manual, that fuse number seven for the BCM has been replaced. But I'm gonna start now. I don't know, this type of circuit to check it can become really a problematic. You don't know if it's something that was added on. There's so many LED lights, there's so many aftermarket circuits, all the wiring on this vehicle has been rerouted, so much has been added to it. You just don't know if this is a problem that is existing from the original GM wiring? Is it a rat that chewed through something? Or is it something that has nothing to do with the actual vehicle with, and it has everything to do with the accessories that was added on? After all, they even extended the roof. They cut the original roof off and they extended it and made it taller. They added different seats, different carpeting, different everything in this vehicle is custom. This is an absolute nightmare. Why somebody would have a vehicle like this, I don't understand. You can't go back to the GM on the warranty. You can't go back to the manufacturer of the camper system. Everybody's pointing the finger at the other person. I don't know who would take responsibility to figure something like this out. Obviously, this guy was smart enough to claim it on his insurance policy as a rat chewed it up and the insurance company agreed to at least check it out. But here's the deal. For me to find exactly what is shorted out, 
I have to find the actual short. Wherever this wire is cut or pinched and it's shorted to ground, I need to find a defective module, a relay, a flasher. Is it something that's in the vehicle? The only way I could determine if it's related to anything with a rat or not is to actually find the problem. Finding the problem is the biggest expense. Look at the labor that I would have to do to disassemble this. All I know right now is that fuse 7 going into the body control module, which is one of many fuses on this vehicle that powers up the body control module, is shorted. Is it part of the stoplight? Is it part of the reverse lamps? Is it part of the interior lamps? I don't know. The body control module has many inputs. How it, the circuitry works inside the body control module, what fuse it uses as an input that controls an output, I don't know. So I went to the GM service manual and reading through the description and operation in their service manual, not looking at diagrams, actually reading the design and the function of this BCM, it told me that fuse number seven only powers up the rear right blinker signal and the I mean the left rear signal and the right front signal lamp and the LED light in the driver's mirror if equipped. This vehicle does not have LED lights. So normally on a dead short like that, you don't want to keep replacing the fuse. <clears throat> You're going to go through a whole box of fuses trying to find the short. So instead, I'm going to plug in a simulated fuse that's going to give me a visual lamp blinking, letting me know that the circuit is still grounded. So the first thing I'm going to start eliminating where the problem is. I know that it goes to the rear, all the way to the rear lamp, and it goes all the way to the front lamp, and I know that it's coming out of the BCM. By looking at the factory diagrams, I can see that there are junctions in between. Coming out of the body control module, which in this vehicle is sitting behind the right side of the dashboard, the wiring goes across the dashboard, and one section of the wire will continue underneath the carpeting under the driver's seat, and the other one will continue through the firewall into the front fuse box, and from there it's going to go to the front left light in the fender. This car has, also has an LED light that was inserted on the fender itself. So over here the diagram tells me that it could also go to the right mirror or left mirror. I know this car doesn't have it. So now I'm going to start to isolate the issue and try to figure out the best way without me taking apart the entire vehicle to at least figure out where the electrical short is. So the first task is I cannot take out the fuse box under the hood. It is buried inside the hood underneath the brake booster, the brake caliper, and underneath a bunch of hoses. It's just no room to get into it. Luckily the diagram tells me that the, the junction coming out of the fuse box is on top of the fuse box. So let's take a closer look after I popped out the body control module, which has the electronic flasher built into it. On this one, it was actually easy. I popped the panel off and GM left me a lot, enough wiring so I can bring this body control module outside and start cutting some wires. Why am I cutting wires on a 2019? Normally, I would remove the pin and put in my own connectors to test them. But this vehicle is long past the warranty issue. This car has been cut, the frame has been cut, the roof has been raised. There is nothing on this vehicle that I have to worry about not to disturb the warranty that I would do on a normal vehicle. So I'm just going to make it easy on myself and cut them. Why did I cut it? I took the 7 amp fuse coming out of the fuse box and I cut it and I wired the lighting directly. Now that I took that 7 amp fuse, 10 amp fuse that's underneath the fuse box right there, and I wired it directly to the output of the yellow wire going to the left, front, and rear 
blinker on the vehicle, I put in basically all this is, is a mechanical heat element flasher and a headlight bulb wired in instead of the fuse. As long as that circuit is shorted, the light is going to keep blinking. So it won't overheat the wiring and melt it and cause an electrical fire. But it gives me a visual light that I can see if that wire is shorted. As soon as it stops blinking, I know that it's not shorted anymore. So now I can go ahead and start isolating the circuit. I know this sounds boring, but the only way to do this properly is to use the factory wiring diagram because all the other diagrams are not going to show you every single junction along the way of each wire. On the factory diagrams, anytime there's a connection, anytime there's a junction, anytime it splits off, if there's a, a joint connector, it tells you the color of the wire, the location where it is, so I can start isolating. Yes, you could drive around on the road and find your destination after a lot of trial and error. I don't have time for this. The diagram is going to give me the basic layout, how to isolate these circuits and make my job a lot easier. So the first task is I eliminated the front lighting. I unplugged it right out of the fuse box under the hood. Now I'm going to do the, the second junction box is underneath the driver's seat. There's a giant fuse box underneath the driver's seat. The only way to really get access to it, you can't even test the fuses. The seat is literally on top of it. So I'm going to unbolt the driver's seat so I can get some access to it so I can check. Because what I really need to do, there isn't another fuse in this fuse box, but the fuse box also acts as a junction. There's wires that are going in and it goes through the fuse box and it, there's junctions going out of it to split it to where it needs to go. So this is basically a fuse box, a relay box, but it also serves as a junction box. So by me unplugging, taking this fuse box out, I can figure out is the electrical short in the back of the vehicle from the driver's seat all the way to the back, or is it from the body control module underneath the dashboard? Neither of these scenarios are good because taking out a dashboard on this car is not easy. Taking apart the rear of the vehicle, wherever they rerouted these wiring, obviously it's not in the same spot as the vehicle was originally designed. They had to remove all these wires. So here is my yellow and green wire. Believe it or not, GM is still using left and right signal, green and yellow. I was a kid, I was 17 years old, over 40 years ago when I started working on cars, they actually used the yellow and green wire. And on a 1974 Chevy, they had the same color wires. Um, actually back then, they actually tried to experiment with aluminum wires and they failed miserably because of the vibration and they broke. But these are the two wires I'm after. So now, I'm going to cut the yellow wire which is the left side signal going to the rear of the vehicle. If the electrical short stops and the minute I cut that wire, I know that it's shorted from the BCM somewhere behind the dash coming underneath the carpeting. Why do I know that? Because that's what the diagrams are telling me the junction is. So I'm going to go ahead and cut another wire. I'm not worried about cutting wires. A little bit of solder, a little bit of heat shrink, can fix a wire. It doesn't matter how many times you cut it, I could always fix it back up. It's going to save me a lot of time in figuring this out. The insurance company wants to know where the electrical short is and they're going to decide where they're going to want to pay for it or not. So I went ahead and I cut the wire and guess what? The electrical short disappeared. Now I know that the problem is actually from the driver's seat all the way to the back. Nothing to do with a rat. The rat never got inside the vehicle. But to my surprise, the insurance company said, go ahead and fix it. I don't care. I put a price on this and they didn't care. They said, go ahead and fix it. So now they authorized me to strip this car down to the bone. 
because I explained to them that these carpets and these patterns are glued in. All of the paneling on this car is fabricated by an aftermarket company. Some are made of light wood, some are made of some kind of plastic, metallic, some have these fake leather padding. The screws that are put into this vehicle don't line up. These are sh screws that you would buy in Home Depot, self-tapping screws. Some of them are six inches long. Some of them go through, you can't find them. Some, some of the screws are actually through the carpeting. You can't even remove the carpeting without taking the screws out. To put this vehicle back together is a nightmare because none of the panels are custom fit for these vehicles. But here we are. At this point, I have to fix the car. So I'm gonna take out all the seats of this vehicle. I'm gonna remove all of the paneling on the side, including with the window shades and everything else. Now I'm committed to fixing this car. Here's the myth and the beauty about working on an electrical system. Everybody thinks that it's unpredictable, it acts on its own, you can't find it. There's some kind of mystery to it. It's actually the most easiest thing to work on. Electricity, copper wire, magnetic field, the excitement of the electrons in the wiring and how it's designed and it runs is all pre-dedicated. It works exactly how it's designed to work. It cannot change in any way, shape or form. Once you figure out how to work with it and understand the circuit, it's going to work every time. Yes, I hook up a battery charger because I want to make sure that the voltage stays current. Because working on the vehicle with the doors open and everything, you want to make sure that you're not losing any power and it's misleading. I'm also going to switch from my blinking light bulb to an audible sound. Um, Power Probe and other companies make this short finder. I don't really particularly like that wireless short finder. I don't think it can work, that it can detect wire harnesses magically through the thing. But I like that it makes a sound. When you hook it up to the shorted wire, it has a red light and it's silent. If that wire changes, open loop, closed loop, it changes the sound. So I can go ahead and disassemble the whole vehicle if I unscrew one of the screws coming out of the body and all of a sudden I eliminate the short, that sounder is going to make a different sound. So I know that that's the short. So I like to use this one because it has a very loud audible sound. Unlike the voltmeter, which you can activate the sound, but it's very faint. Here is I pulled away some of the panels just to get an idea of how many wires are underneath this panel. None of them are fused, none of them are routed, none of them have connectors. There is no way to trace this. If there was a problem with the aftermarket wiring, there is no way anybody can fix it other than the manufacturer that probably knows where they put their wiring. So at this point, we just kept stripping out this vehicle. We took out the rear seats. We even took out the, the, the guy's porta potty we had to remove the center console with all of its fake air conditioning and remote controls and audio signals. I mean, we just had to remove everything to get it out of the way. Ultimately, I paid my guy to come in on Saturday and paid him time and a half to remove the interior of this vehicle. We had no choice but to actually take off the entire side panel which is one ginormous piece that goes over the whole left side of the vehicle on the whole interior over all the windows, taking it out to give me access to see where the wire was routed. Then we took our time to take off the rear headliner panel, which has speakers and handles in it. We had to take it off because we had to follow the wiring where they rerouted, not where GM put it, where they rerouted it. None of the screws were the same. They just used whatever hardware they needed. They put wooden panels everywhere. The biggest, look at the size of this screw that they put in going into a handle in the headliner. They have wood two by fours 
They have everything in this vehicle. This, what surprised me the most is they still had the curtain airbags mounted on this vehicle. How dangerous is that? They actually cut the roof, raised it up, added windows, put all of this paneling. Can you imagine if the curtain airbag explodes on this vehicle? It would devastate everything in its path. The seat belts are not original. The seats are not original. This vehicle, in my opinion, is like those stretch limos. They're absolutely dangerous. They look good all put together, but when you actually take them apart, they're a disaster. Finally, we got to the point where we just touched that wire harness underneath that panel, and we can hear the sound changing on the short finder. So we knew we are getting close. We stripped it all out, and guess what? The sharp metal that was cut to raise the roof cut into that yellow wire and some other ones and caused the short. But at this point, we had no choice. We had to fix it, and our next task was to resolder all our wiring and put Humpty Dumpty together again. This was a five day repair during the busy season in Southwest Florida. But at the end, we put this vehicle back together to its original state, rerouted the wire in the back so it will never get cut again, reassembled the entire vehicle, test drove it, and everything was back to normal. Yes, the insurance company paid a lot of money to get this repaired, but this is just a quick overview of what it is. After all, I am Jack Short. They don't call me Jack Short for nothing. I started my career working on electrical shorts on vehicles way before computers and electronics that are now in today's vehicles. The basic electrical system hasn't changed. Thank you for watching a quick overview how to track and repair an electrical short.